What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about a couple different ways that you can generate grass in your models for use in renderings. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by Shaper 3D. Shaper 3D is a 3D modeling app specifically designed for use on your iPad with the Apple Pencil. Since SketchUp doesn't currently have a mobile modeling experience, consider checking out Shaper 3D if you're looking for a way to create 3D models on on your iPad. It has a modeling interface that's similar to SketchUp's, but it's optimized for mobile. Plus, any model created in Shaper 3D can be exported to SketchUp or other desktop CAD formats. If you're interested in trying Shaper 3D, check it out at thesketchupessentials.com slash Shaper 3D. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so when you do this, the first thing you need to think about is why do you want grass in your model? And what I mean is adding grass in doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense if you're just trying to show a model like this one. And by the way, model credit for this one, this is the Hungarian House by SZ Kristoff. I will link to that in the notes down below if you want to download it and follow along. But um, in this case, you have to ask yourself what you want to do with the grass. Because if you're just showing a SketchUp model like this one, there's really no sense modeling a whole bunch of little ge grass geometry in here because it doesn't get you anything. So why add a whole bunch of geometry in here that's not going to speed up your model? Now you might come in here and add some individual plants or something like that, like if you had planting beds or something that way, but if you're just visually indicating grass, there's really no reason to add this in. Specifically in this case, we are more talking about adding grass for use in 3D realistic renderings. And so I wanted to talk about a few different methods that you can use in order to do this. And some of them are a little bit more rendering engine specific, but I want you to have an idea of the options that are out there. And so I wanted to start off with a free tool called Make Fur. And so Make Fur is an extension that allows you to basically generate fur or a whole bunch of different objects along a face. And so the way that Make Fur works is you just select the face that you want to add um, this stuff along. You can just click on this button for Make Fur, and it's give you it's going to give you a number of different objects. And so what this is going to do in this case is you can actually use the details and the drop downs to generate something like grass on this face. And so what I could do is I could turn up the density or the number of things that are going to be created in here. All right, and so you can see how in this case. Um, I'm just going to select the drop down for arch. So the arch option is going to allow me to create a kind of grass in here. So you can also do linear if you just want your grass to be straight. So this is going to give you some options for some different kinds of grass. And then you can use these sliders to adjust the number of objects that are created as well as the density. So that can allow you to create grass inside of your model. So you can see how as I move this slider up, this runs a little bit slow because it's previewing a whole bunch of different options. Um, but you can see how I can use this in order to generate grass along this face. And so as long as this checkbox is checked, I can preview what this is going to look like. And then once this kind of looks the way that this looks, and I'm going to adjust this, whoops, to a thousand per face and we'll do a density of around a thousand a square yard. So that's going to basically come in here and create a thousand pieces of grass. And you can adjust all the ways that these look down here. I will link to a video about how to use Make Fur down below. But when I click this button for Make Fur, what this is going to do is this is going to generate all of these polygons in here. But you can see how when this does, does this in the lower left hand corner, um, it calls out that it's generating this number of polygons. So in this case, this created something like 6,000 polygons and it created some grass in here. And uh, you know, I mean, this is fine, I guess. Um, you, can, you can use this to either create these little grass pieces and then you could render them in something like, uh, let's say I was to render this in InScape, just because that's a quick example. So if you look in your InScape rendering, this grass is generated in here, but at this density, it's not very realistic. So probably what you'd have to do is turn that density way up and really adjust the size of your grass in here as well. So, um, you know, instead of doing, you'd probably have to do something like 2000 and 2000, maybe turn the length down to make it a little bit more realistic. So maybe make them like three inches long 
and then you could click the make fur again and you could do this in order to kind of generate out your polygons and your grass in order to make this look like grass and so you can see how that added even more grass in here and you can see how that shows up in Inkscape. so if I zoom out you can see that the further out I zoom the more realistic this looks the problem with this method that I really don't like is that um, it just creates so much geometry inside your models that they rapidly start getting unusable so you could mess around with like swapping out some proxies and stuff like that and actually we're going to talk about that in a second but I, this is not my favorite method but if you're looking for a free extension to allow you to do this you could definitely do this the other thing you could do that I'm not really going to demonstrate but you could use the make crowd option what make crowd does is it allows you to spread um, different components inside your model so you could find a more realistic grass model and then spread that across here but you run into the same problem where it's just so much geometry and so in this case I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'll just hide this geometry we'll keep it in here um, but it's not really what we want to use in this case so in this case I'm gonna look at an extension called scatter and so the nice thing about scatter is it's an extension that allows you to take objects and scatter them but it lets you scatter them as proxies and so I will note that scatter is a paid extension it does cost money um, but if you're doing a lot of this kind of thing for your renderings it can definitely be worth it and so in this case what we would do is we would come in here and we would select the face that we want to scatter these objects along and then we would activate scatter and then what we would do is we want we would want to in this case I would probably group this surface so as its own group but we would want to select what's known as a host and so scatter allows us to select a host or a place and then scatter a bunch of objects along here and so in this case what we could do is we could actually go in and use the scatter library and it has a library of grass that you can use to scatter inside your model and you can see how when I click on it this allows you to bring these in as proxies and these proxies work for V-Ray, Thea, Maxwell and Inkscape they may work on a couple others too now I'm not 100% sure um, but we want proxies and we want render only and the reason we want those two things is because we want to load these and scatter them into our model but we don't want all of that geometry showing up inside of SketchUp because it makes everything so slow so I'm just going to click on this face so that's going to let this be our uh, our host face and then this is going to come in here and it's going to show you a whole bunch of red where it's scattering this object and you can see how this does a much better job of covering this whole face and the other thing about it is all of these proxies are really lightweight models get scattered in here um, but they're not in here slowing down your SketchUp model so now if I was to run Inkscape and take a look at this you can see how all of that grass shows up inside of Inkscape um, where it's been scattered. Um, so it's just showing up in your rendering engine, which is a lot better at handling this level of geometry. You can see how even in this case with the amount of grass that was scattered in here, Inkscape is struggling to keep up a little bit. So you do need to be a little bit careful in here, but you can see how this grass in your rendering is super ultra realistic. Um, and the reason it's ultra realistic is because every one of these geometry pieces is being brought in here and loaded um, by your rendering engine. So this is another way you can do this. The nice thing, the thing that I like about Scatter is it's adjustable. So I can come in here, for example, and um, let's say I wanted less of this. I could come in here and adjust my spacing down or up. So let's say I wanted to space this by tens instead of sevens you can see how the number of objects in here adjusts and then you can click the button for regenerate and when you regenerate what this does is this replaces all of this um, with your new generated stuff and uh, so you can make changes to this scattered stuff the other thing you could do with this is you could also add in some flowers or other things like that um, inside of this rendering as well 
so scatter is great for like custom landscapes if you need to do like really realistic landscapes or something like that scatter is a great choice and i will link to more information about scatter in the notes down below all right and then the last option is to use your rendering engine's built-in grass setting and not all of these have this but like inscape does i know v-ray has their fur options um, a lot of these have kind of a built-in option now um, if you don't want to use something like scatter but basically the way that works is in inscape for example your different materials your different materials can be set as grass so it'll actually render those as grass like for example if i was to go in here and look at my grass material um, using my eyedropper you can see how this drop down allows you to set this as a grass material and so when you do that um, if you look at your rendering here you can actually you can actually add and adjust your grass inside of your rendering without having to do anything inside your SketchUp model. So you can see how this is getting rendered as a grass object and it's really fast. And then if you look at the SketchUp model, all you have is this texture in here. So, um, so that is a really fast way to add grass to your renderings if something like that is happening. Um, or let's say instead of InScape, let's say we were to use V-Ray. V-Ray has this button inside the objects to add fur to selection. And when you click the button to add fur to selection, it's going to basically treat this selected object as a fur object. So you can see how you kind of get this dotted line in here. And now if you were to run an interactive render inside of V-Ray, you can see how this would render a grass this would render grass geometry inside of your uh, inside of your rendering without there having to be this geometry in here as well, and that's all fully editable as well. So you can go into your uh, V-Ray objects and you can adjust things like your count. So let's say I ran this up to something like two. You can see how you can really up the count of your grass in here. And so you can adjust things like the length and the gravity and different things like that. And you can see how, again, that just loads way faster than using the uh, scatter geometry or the make fur geometry. So that gives you a good option as well. So that's kind of an overview of how you can add grass to your models. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you're doing it. Are you creating grass in your renderings? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.